Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our evening Dhamma. So last night, um, one of the things that came up was friendship. Friendship with the good, friendship with the evil. Good friends, bad friends. Thought I'd do to spend a little bit of time talking about friendship, according to Buddhism. Friendship's a curious thing. It, um, <coughs> I'd say, I would say friendship uh, in, in many cases is something that misleads us from right and wrong, from good and bad. We find ourselves caught up with people because they're my friend. It's a curious phrase. It's a curious excuse or reason for doing something. Now, if we mean that we owe them something, a debt of gratitude perhaps, that's reasonable. But it tends to be more than that. We identify with, it, with individuals. From a Buddhist perspective, it's quite possible that we've had some connection coming from past lives with certain people. You, know, you notice how sometimes you're just unable to make a connection with people. You might think, well, that's someone I'd like to get to know, but maybe they don't want to have anything to do with you. Or you look at someone and there's just no connection. Or just faces in the crowd. When you talk to them, there's no connection. But other people, you find yourself caught up with them perhaps your whole life. And you identify with them as being a friend. Even with a debt of gratitude, though, I don't think there's any reason we should let that color the way we relate to others. Let people drag us down the wrong path just because they, they've done good for us in the past. We don't want to abandon them. Certainly not the right way. It doesn't help us. It doesn't help them. I even spend all our time and energy trying to help an individual who doesn't want to be helped. They're going down a destructive path and spend all your energy trying to dissuade them even when the evidence clearly shows that they're not they're not to be dissuaded from their path. Friendship is taken quite seriously. It's, it's, it's something important in, in Buddhism. Something we have to see in its proper light. Friendship is, well, two things. First of all, friendship involves friendliness. And ideally, we're friendly towards everyone. It would be nice if we could all be friends. There's no question about that. We should be a good friend, really, to everyone. And having the attitude of being friendly towards all people, I think, is perfectly valid. There's never a reason to be cruel or mean or un unkind to others. And sometimes your kindness takes the form of um, limiting your engagement with people for their benefit, for your benefit the general goodness of, the, of you both. Uh, but it should never be cruel or mean. 
and sometimes sometimes karma and past life relationships means well, most most of us it means we have to be involved with people who we wouldn't otherwise be inclined to be involved with and in fact that makes it all the more important to be kind and to be friendly because it'll be a source for constant or common uh, conflict if we have bad karma with someone and our inclination is to constantly be in conflict with them then that should be a very important part of our meditation practice is learning to overcome that conflict learning to change the course of our journey in samsara so that we don't get caught up in the same cycles of vengeance and conflict that we were caught up in before. But the second thing is that it's important to be careful. Careful who we whose who's, who's company and whose friendship we cultivate. For some people we be a good friend and that can be great if we have something to provide to them and if they are keen to improve through our friendship, that's great. But then there are people who seek only to, to drag us down, whose very nature is detrimental to themselves and to those who would call them friends. And those people you have to be careful with. You can be compassionate and kind, but you should never consider them as proper friends. So the Buddha talked about, in, uh, in the Diga Nikaya, he talked about different types of friends those who appear to be friends but are not really friends. And these are the most common mistaken friends that we come across. And if someone's unfriendly and someone is um, clearly not your friend, you're not likely to, and to see them as your friend. But there are ways by which, as I said, we mistakenly come into friendship. And so the Buddha outlined a, a number of these. He talked about the, uh, the friend who, who, always, who only takes the taker. So people who are People who are constantly uh, after you for you for for uh, benefit for their own benefit, and uh, you, you can see this in you can see the insincerity here, the, the the sort of the the mental illness involved. It's quite pitiful, really, when people are not able to to give. It's a common, you might say, uh, mental illness uh, of sorts. And I, I phrase it in this way because normally we think, well, that person's just selfish and mean, and we get very upset at them. But you really shouldn't be. You should, you should pity such a person, a person who constantly wants, who constantly uh, takes. They take everything. They'll give you a little useless things, useless help, and expect much more in, re in response. They'll help you. When they do help you, they help you out of fear. So they do it on, not because they're keen at all or interested at all in your benefit, but because they know if they, they feel that uh, they have to in order to get 
in order to get from you. And the mooch, someone to be pitied. Not pitied by giving them whatever they want, of course. The worst thing you can do for someone, anyone, is give them whatever they want. But uh, we understood that this is a person who needs a different kind of help probably need to be cut off. And it's only a person that drags you down. You don't help them by giving them everything. The second one is a person who talks, who, who's in Thai they say, Di Ta Pu, which means they, they're, only, they're only good in speech. They never actually do anything friendly or, or, or helpful to their friends. But, uh, they talk about good deeds they've done for you in, their pa in the past, they remind you of all the good things they've done for you, and they uh, prom make grand doi promises about the future. It's funny, there was a man who did this to me in Thailand. We were in Thailand and this was uh, I don't know how many years ago, but not so many years ago. And he, oh, he talked such a good game. He told me about all the millions of dollars that he was, that he used to have and that he was going to have, and he promised. I helped him. I, I, you know, I was helping him get into being a monk. He was a temporary monk, and he said, oh, when I disrobe, I'm going to make all this money, and I'm going to give you build you a meditation center in Canada and talk to him, all this. And I only really half believed him, but I thought he was sincere. I just thought, oh yeah, well, you know, who knows the future. But uh, I was like, great, well, if it happens, it happens. But it turns out he was just, it was a total uh, scam, really. He was really just, I don't know, it was bizarre, because I never ended up giving him, and I didn't have anything great to give him, but... Um, yeah, in the end, it just turned out to be his way of using me, and so it seems like the thing, sort of thing that he does. Really interesting case. Pitiful, really. It's, um, it's unpleasant that, that, that to think that people get in this state where they will manipulate their fellow humans. I mean, this is, of course, common. For me, living in a monastery, I don't see it nearly as often as most, but we get so, um, what's the word, inured to it, or, or in desensitized to it. Or we think it's somehow, you know, just the way people behave, it's how to, you know, you can't get by in the world without it, which is really un unfortunate, because it's such an a insane way to live. You know, how can you possibly think that this is the right way to be, the right way to go? Clearly people who don't have a sense of clarity of mind. Some people just seem to be unable, even though they might pick up the practice of meditation, they're unable to straighten out their minds. It's like those Nigerian Prince scams. They, they say, give me some money and I'll give you a lot more. I mean, our first inclination is to get angry at these people, but it's just so incredibly sad and pitiful that they would, you know, that they live that way. The third is the flatterer. This is a, it should be recognizable to many of you. This is a person who tells you what a great friend you are and how wonderful you are and praises you and somehow thinks that that's worth something and therefore they should get something in return, right? Usually that's how this goes. They feel like flattering you. By flattering you, they, you um, well, even just fla by flattering you, that's, that makes them a good friend. So they'll praise your good deeds, they'll praise your evil deeds. The good things you do, they'll praise. It's very dangerous. 
it's clearly a sign of some, some mental imbalance or some problem. Hey, you might even recognize this in yourselves. We do this sometimes. Flattering others, feeling that it makes us a better friend. Feeling that somehow that'll make them like us more. It doesn't mean you shouldn't compliment people. In fact, it is a great thing to appreciate other people's good deeds. But it should only be their good deeds, right? You know you're a flatterer. You know someone's a flatterer when they praise the bad things you do. When they praise you to your face and disparage you behind your back. It's a sign that they're just a flatterer. No, there's no substance or any wisdom behind what they say. There's no goodness behind it either. The fourth is the person who the person who follows you um, or leads you or is your fellow in your fellow in ruin. They are, they are, this is the person who, the friend that we can all remember having, who, who was our friend in, in, uh, in crime, our partner in crime. You know? When we get drunk, they get drunk, they encourage us to get drunk, we encourage them to get drunk and they encourage us. And we go wasting our energy and our lives away in gambling and drinking and carrying on friends in debauchery. That's probably the, the one that's the worst, the most dangerous. It's, it's what we see probably most often where friendship leads the friends to ruin. And they lead each other down the wrong path. Very dang it's very um, no, it's, it's a um, it's a problem you know? it's a danger right because it's very easy to pick up such friends how do we know and this is the, the power of friendship friendship is about encouraging each other it's very easy to get a friendship, to cultivate a friendship, to have friends who will lead you and encourage you to lead them down the wrong path. You know, and, and if and when you decide that you've got a moral compass and you start to get an idea of what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad, what's to your benefit and to your detriment, now, this is what, something that shakes up a lot of friendships. I mean, practicing meditation is sure to shake up old friendships. Because you start to realize that you weren't helping each other. You weren't bringing happiness, peace, freedom from suffering to each other. You're only entangling each other up with, in conflict and um, you know, evil, for lack of a better word. So those are bad friends. Now, positively, the Buddha offered some advice on where how to find good friends. He gave a list of four good friends. The first is someone who's helpful, and this is a great friend. You know, someone who supports you when when you don't notice something's wrong, they protect you. They protect you, they protect your they protect your life, they protect your possessions. They will be conscious conscious of uh, your your benefit. I mean that's a rare thing, a great thing. Something to be emulated, something to be respected. Someone who looks after you, someone who, who thinks of you and your benefit and your detriment. And in times of danger, they are a refuge, a person who 
you can go to when you have problems. Someone who goes the extra mile. When you ask for help, they give more than what was asked. This is a sign of a good friend. A sign of someone who is really rare and, and, and to be emulated, to be praised, to be associated with. Not just because of what you can get from them, but because this is someone with a good heart that should be emulated. And if friends, any two or any two friends are like this, then they both, of course, gain. And we're always helping each other, we both gain. The second is someone who is uh, unmoved in good times and bad, right? Because you've got the fair weather friend, I think is the word. Someone who in, time, in good times, they're with you, but when things go wrong, they're out. Someone who doesn't stick with you when the going gets tough. Someone who doesn't stick with you when, when, when problems arise. Well, this is a person who's not like that. A person who tells you their secrets, guards your secrets. Who does not let you down in misfortune. Someone who is with you through thick and thin. Who might even sacrifice their life for you. I and mean, that's the sort of friend that is hard to find. Someone who cares for you. Someone who has this wish to see you happy. I and mean, that's what friendship is for, right? That's what you know, friend. That's what true friendship should be for. Not like any relationship. Not what can I get from this person? That doesn't work. Any two friends who are uh, inclined to wonder what the other person can give to them will 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 be a friendship of of always lack or or wanting. Whereas if both friends are thinking, what can I do for this person? How can I make them happy? What can I do to bring good to them? Then both gain. The third is a friend who points out what is good. And this is the best friend, number three here, but it's really the one that in Buddhism we, when we talk about a good friend, I mean, someone who points out good, someone who, who teaches or in, instructs, advises you, someone who you can go to for advice, who has a good head on their shoulders and much to say about right and wrong, good and bad, that is of benefit, that is of value. Perhaps not someone who preaches, but someone who is good for giving advice, someone who has their head on straight, who knows who has things, that, things to tell. They keep you from wrongdoing. They support you in doing good. They give you encouragement when you do good things. They tell you things you don't know. Now that's a rare friend, right? Someone who has, who is able to, to teach you, to give you knowledge that you didn't have. And, and finally, they, they lead you to happiness. They lead you on to what is good. You know, that's the measure of wisdom, right? So the measure of a friend who is, who is uh, wise is that the things they tell you bring you peace and happiness and freedom from suffering. And the fourth type of true friend is the sympathetic friend, one who sympathizes with you. They don't rejoice at your misfortune, they rejoice in your good fortune. Right? Someone who has mudita, true mudita, right? not just someone who says it, but someone who is really happy when they hear, someone who you know when you tell them good things that you've done, good things that have happened to you, that you know that they're happy for you. 
they stop others who speak against you. When someone says something bad about you, they protect you, they correct them. And when others speak in praise, they agree, they commend such people. It's a fairly simple and, and it's not, a very, not a terribly deep teaching, but you know, I think it's important we go over various aspects of Buddhism. I mean, this is a very practical teaching. I think one that many that most of us can relate to. But the deeper teaching, I think, is about how this mind, how the mind works in cultivating friendship, both being friendly and in clinging to people, identifying this is my friend, which is of course problematic. Of course it's great to be friendly, it's good, it's wholesome to be friendly towards all, but to cling to someone just because they're our friend, it's never a good reason for any, it's never a good reason in any rate, uh, in, at any rate, in any case. Even good people, we shouldn't cling to them just because they're our friends. We should cultivate their friendship because it's to for all for the ultimate gain, you know, for cultivating peace, happiness, freedom from suffering. So there you go, a little bit on friendship. Thank you all for tuning in. <laughs>